Hey, good morning, guys. I uh, wanted to make a, a video, um, <clears throat> just a, a quick little recap of what, what's going on with us guys and uh, uh, me and Scott in our season. And uh, also, I wanted to make a video um, that was a, a, a quick, another quick safety video. And it's something that uh, some of the viewers of one of my other videos that I made pointed out to me. And I'm glad they did um, because there was a mistake that I made in a video. Um, where I was rushing, uh, it was a, uh, for those of you that might, might have seen the video before, um, it was a video where I was showing how I transitioned from my climbing line to my tether and then going back and, and coming back down. And um, in that video, it highlighted uh, a, a safety issue that I just wanted to bring up and focus on. And it has to do with your carabiners. Um, what had happened was, in the video, um, in the video, um, I was on my tether. Let me, let me show you what happened here. So, in the video, I was on my tether. Um, and I wanted to go from my tether to my climbing line. Um, I don't have my climbing line set up here, but I just, I'll just kind of show you uh, what it basically happened. When I went from my tether to my climbing line, basically what I did is um, I was I was going to another uh, my other bridge, but when I clipped my carabiner to my climbing bridge, this on your on this type of carabiner it has a, a screw a, basically a, a a screw lock for the gate on your carabiner. So when you, you screw it all the way down, you can't open this carabiner. And that, that's closed up, that's locked, it's safe. And it, it basically, once this carabiner is closed up, it's, it's mechanically hold, holding to itself. It's very strong like this. This is the way it's designed to be used. Now, when you unlock your, the, uh, the locking mechanism for the carabiner, at that point, now you can open up your, your carabiner. And that's how you clip in and clip out, right? What had happened was I had this screw for, it, I guess it was just in the right spot where when I went and clipped back onto my climbing line and closed my carabiner, I heard the click. Let me show you. Do like this. It was like I heard the click, but if you, as you can see here, even though that clicked, that carabiner is not completely closed. It caught the locking mechanism for the carabiner and it didn't close. So right here, now this is basically a hook, but it's not a closed carabiner and that's weak. That's dangerous. And it was something that I didn't notice. Um, I made the, the entire video, I put it out and it wasn't, I think probably a month went by before, um, you know, somebody had watched the whole thing and they caught it and they pointed it out to me. And then I think a couple of other people also saw it as well. And um, it's a very important little thing. It's a, it's a, I mean, it's a big thing, but it's a, something that probably happens to a lot of guys. They don't even realize it. And um, in our last video that we, we put out about uh, climbing safety, one of the things that we said in it was, you know, to slow down. And in that day, it was a perfect example of me rushing. Um, that day, if anybody that saw the video, there was, it was, I filmed it in the summertime. There was a thunderstorm coming and I was trying to quickly wrap everything up so I can get out of there before it started raining on me. And I clipped in, I heard it click, but I didn't look at it and I didn't take the time to close the lock and make sure that my carabiner is on there closed and sit, closed up uh, right and I was safe. And that is a huge factor. And uh, I just wanted to point that out because um, there's, you know, there's a lot of guys that are doing this, and especially when you're doing it in the dark. You know, you, you hear you hear your carabiner, you hear that click, and you say, okay, I'm good, it's closed up. You know, take the time to look at your carabiner, make sure that you take the time to close it up, that it's locked up tight. Make sure everything's good. Take that second. I mean, it really, I mean, what does it take, really? It literally takes you seconds to do it, and especially when you're doing it in the dark, because there's some guys that, um, you know, they're clipping in, and they're, they're trying to catch like a D loop or something, and, you know, maybe it's in a spot where you can't really see too well. Um, it's in the dark, you hear it clip on. 
you know, make sure that it's where you want it to be and that everything's locked up tight. Take that time because, uh, you know, you're going to be up, you know, 20 feet, something like that. And uh, you don't want to find out after the fact that you didn't have it right. And uh, I was really glad that the uh, guys, you know, caught that, pointed it out. And I just wanted to uh, highlight it and, and showcase it here. Um, unfortunately, I, I don't have one of those other, there's a couple of different types of carabiners. And I wish I had them here so I could show it, but um, there's some, some better ones that you, that you could, you know, that you could use uh, compared to this type. Um, because they'll, they, you have to turn them to open them and then it'll close itself up every time, you know. So I think those are a little bit safer. Um, I think those are called like a three-point carabiner. I'm not sure. I'll have to look into that. But um, if you're going to use this type, and I think these types are very popular, um, just take the time make sure it's closed up so that you're safe. All right. So that's about it. Um, Scott and I are going to be getting out this weekend and doing some a uh, little bit more run and gun style hunting. Um, this season so far, we've been uh, we had a lot of you know we do everything. We don't just run and gun hunt. We don't just saddle hunt. Um, and we had a couple of different locations. We had a couple of really nice bucks, older bucks that we were targeting, and we hunted those deer really hard, um, but they just never showed in daylight. And uh, Unfortunately, we both Scott and I had to deal with being sick during the middle of the rut. Um, I missed the first week of November. I couldn't even hunt. And uh, I had two weeks off. I hunted the second and third week I had off. But I was still dealing with lingering effects of my cold, tickling my throat, and um, it was pretty difficult. But I did get out every day for two weeks, at least half a day. And, uh, and I'll tell you, as, you know, as I get older, you know, I'm, I'm 52 years old, and as I get older, it's, uh, it's pretty tough to hang in there all day from sunup till sundown every day during the rut. Uh, we did it, you know, quite a few days, but it, it really wears you down. You, work, you hunt all day from sunup to sundown, that, that, that sunup till sundown, that next morning is rough, is rough to get up. So there was a lot of days where we just hunted in the afternoon and Spent a lot of time midday going in kind of late morning so that I could sleep in a little bit. And then get, you know, once I got up, got myself together, I'd go out and hunt all day till dark. But, uh, you know, as I get older, it gets, it gets harder and harder every year. And uh, unfortunately, we didn't, you know, I, I have not had a good season. I just, uh, uh, the, we were, you know, focusing on a couple of particular animals. I, this year, I kind of, um, I really wanted to hold myself to a standard of trying to kill a buck that's four years old or older. And um, it's not, you know, it's not like I had a lot of opportunities that even two, two and a half or three and a half year old bucks, I, I really didn't see a whole lot of bucks this year. Um, I had quite a few opportunities at some does and I did kill one doe early in the season. And um, it's just been kind of rough, you know. I, there was a lot of days that I hunted and didn't even see a deer on good days too. So, um, you know, it's not over yet. Um, actually, from all the intel that Scott and I had from last year and some of the spots that we're hunting, um, actually, we're, we're thinking that late season could be very good in some of these spots because last year, um, in the early part of December, we had a lot of um, daylight buck movement. And um, we're kind of hoping that happens this year. And maybe, you know, just late in the game, we'll be able to get lucky. But, um, we're going to get out this weekend, and uh, as I was saying earlier, we were hunting um, a lot of preset locations that we had targeting these deer, and we didn't do a whole lot of, um, you know, run and gun style saddle hunting, which we promote a lot, but um, we just, you know, we had these locations, we had them all set up, and we were really uh, looking forward to hunting them, and we spent a lot of time in them, and they really didn't pan out too well for us, although Scott did kill uh, he killed a buck the, uh, the other day on Sunday, um, I'm sorry, Monday. It was the last day of his vacation, and at the, like the last 30 minutes, uh, you know, he squeaked it out. He had a, button, a buck come in chasing a doe, bumping a doe, walked right underneath him, and, uh, and he got it. So that was good. Um, but 
I'm going to try and get out. This is the week of uh, Thanksgiving. I'm going to be trying to get it. I'm hearing now, I was planning on hunting Thanksgiving morning, but I'm hearing it's going to be really, really windy. So we'll have to see about that. Um, I might just focus on Friday, uh, Friday morning because I have to work on Friday. Uh, I work the afternoons. So I'm going to probably hunt in the morning on Friday and I'll be hunting all weekend. And Scott and I are going to, uh, we're going to take our, our saddles and we're going to take our, our DRT rope. We've got a couple of spots um, that we're going to get uh, really aggressive. Uh, we're, going to, we're going to move way back in um, and pick out a tree, throw a throw ball up and uh, pull our climbing lines up and climb DRT and, and get after it. We're going to film the whole, whole thing. Be awesome if we could uh, pull it off and get a shot at something, but um, it's been pretty tough this season, so <laughs> who knows what's going to happen. But you know, we're having fun. We're out there. Um, the, the, for us, the struggle is real. You know, we're just a couple blue collar guys that are hunting a lot of you know public ground and you know places where we get permission. Um, but we're here in New York, and there's a lot of pressure here. Um, we a lot of competition from other guys. I had, I had. Uh, uh, tree steps stolen out of one of my best sets that I was really looking forward to hunting. Um, and then some guy built a permanent stand probably 50 yards from where I was hunting. So that kind of was like a punch in the gut. Um, I had a piece of property that I had permission on for 25 years. And it's like one of my favorite places to hunt. And unfortunately, I lost that, that spot. I still have three other properties right close to it that I still have, you know, I'm still hunting the same area. But the, the tree that I really like to be in, I, I lost that particular spot. I can't be in the right, the perfect tree. So that's made it kind of rough. And um, had one day, I had a, a spot that I was sitting. Everything was just perfect. It was on like November 13th. The wind was right. Everything was just right. And a hiker came walking through the, right through the woods, not on a trail or anything. Came, and the, the hiker came walking up towards my tree stand. And wouldn't you know it, <clears throat> I had a, a big doe walking right towards me at the same time. She was going to walk right under me. I wouldn't have shot the doe, but I was hoping that it's November 13th. There's a good chance there'd be a buck on her back trail. And uh, what are the chances that, you know, at the exact same time, here comes this hiker walking through the woods and the doe sees the hiker. She ran off back where she came from and the hiker went off. So I didn't see anything that day, but it's just been one of those kind of kinds of seasons. But, uh, I'm a uh, I'm an optimist, <clears throat> and it ain't over till it's over. And a lot of times, when everything's going wrong, it just means that sooner or later, you know, your luck's about to change, and your season can change in an instant. So I'm kind of hoping this weekend um, something like that will happen. And if we can get something on video, that would be great. But um, this is our first year trying to film stuff uh, while hunting. It's not it's not easy. We hunt way back, and um, you know. My cam my camera gear set up just to get back and and hunt is like it adds about eight pounds, and eight pounds doesn't sound like a lot, but <clears throat> you know with everything else you're carrying, it's just uh, it makes it a little rough when you're climbing climbing big hills and getting way back. So, um, <clears throat> so that's about it. A little uh, recap on our you know what's going on with us in our season. Um, like I said, we're going to get out this weekend. Hopefully, we have some luck and uh, try and get, get some stuff on video for you. And uh, we got a couple of other <clears throat> topics that we want to discuss. And uh, I got some, you know, some reviews of stuff. That, like, there's a lot of equipment that I bought this year and I did reviews on this stuff. And I want to, uh, now I've had a chance to use the stuff all season. Um, I wanted to, you know, discuss the things that I like, the things I don't like. And, uh, you know, hopefully, you know, people appreciate that um, might help them you know uh, if there's something you know I, you know, I got stuff like you know uh, some some of the Sitka gear that I used this year for the first time um, I used a Ozonix uh, this year for the first time and uh, you know I'll make some reviews on on that stuff and uh, tell you what I think so uh, that's about it that's all I have for you right now and uh, Hopefully you guys uh, like the stuff that we're putting out. Um, you know, saddle hunting's getting uh, very, very popular for good reason. And uh, <clears throat> we're trying to bring you as much uh, saddle hunting related um, 
you know, material as we can for any of you guys that are getting into that and uh, want to explore it. Plus, just you know, we you know talk about just general stuff with you know deer hunting and, and gear and that kind of thing. So, <clears throat> hopefully, you guys like it. Uh, if this is your first time watching any of our stuff um, and <clears throat> you like it, I really appreciate it. If you uh, like and subscribe to our channel, and uh, hopefully, we'll bring you some more. Uh, some more stuff that that'll be beneficial to you. Um, if you guys have any questions, you know, just always we, we try to answer every question. Um, so just put it in the comments section, and uh, uh, and that's about it. So uh, climb safe, and best of luck to you guys.